Hey, it's Tim Brown, and this is the Hook Better Leads podcast. I'm here with Josh Fisher of Northwest Construction. How are you doing, Josh? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking, Tim. Yes, sir. Today we're talking about the ideal roofing marketing plan, and we're really trying to get this down. We're actually doing a bunch of math behind the scenes right now, trying to get a scalable percentage and what you should spend on in your budget. And I want to first say a good place to start with any of this is to look at where your current revenue came from. So we are kind of just picking through Josh's books. I won't say those numbers at the moment, but like referral was the highest one. Then we had Google, Google stuff. <laughs> you know, you got ads, services, you've got organic, you've got website. Um, the two kind of lead aggregator things that we've been talking about are Thumbtack and Angie's list uh, or Angie's leads. Um, and you also spent money on other miscellaneous things. Video was a pretty big one for you as well. Uh, marketing, yep. flyers, cold calling. You've tried some different things, trade shows, uh, home shows, local yep. events. So um, after kind of looking through all that, and I know that you know, I'm challenging you to be, to be uh, intentional about this. Is there anything that stuck out to you as far as like, what your percentages are that you're spending versus what your percentages are that you're getting back. And, and I definitely do not want you saying anything nice about us unless you really mean it. Cause I think, uh, you know, obviously I'm going to be vouching for Google organic all day. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking like closing rates, right. That's what yeah. it's like you're total. You want to look back. Number one, where did your money come from? Um, mm -hmm what was your most, like you said, you listed off some of the larger ones for us and then some auxiliary. Can I things. say close rates? Can was I that? say your close rates that you had? Cause I thought those were very interesting. Uh, sure. I mean, I guess, I don't know, uh, which, but it depends on when it is right. Because we were, well, we yeah, were, you were talking about like a referral over the course, uh, 33%. I think that's really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Google local services, 20%, Google organic, 18% website 15 thumbtack 17 we don't know necessarily angie's angie leads at the moment because it's kind of a little ways out but there's a lot in the prospect stage because that's newer for you mm -hmm. um what's that yeah and that's what i was going to get at is like i mean there's two kind of data sets that we looked at right there's year to date where there's a lot yeah. of stuff in the pipeline and then there's past data even from like last year all data that gave a little bit further perspective, you know, because the close rate on referrals for year to date for us is a lot less lower than our all data of 33% because it's still in yeah. the pipeline. So that's one thing to keep in mind, like when people are looking at their numbers, like when is this from and are the numbers actually the ones you need to rely on, you know? Yeah. I think it's a really good note though. The three things you might need to make your ideal roofing marketing plan would be how much you spent on things this past in the past year, what your closing rate is for those things and how much revenue you got from those things. Those three columns in a yeah. spreadsheet would are, are incredibly valuable and mm -hmm. to actually look at them. The funny thing is a lot of people aren't looking at those numbers at all. Well, and that's what I was going to say. The number one thing yeah. that you're saying there is you got to track it. That, yeah. That's what it all comes down to. Like if you're not tracking where your money is coming from, you don't know where to put your money. It's literally a guessing game. So like yeah. you got to have systems in place, whether it's literally asking a customer on the phone, how did you hear about us? Or just if it literally comes in, making sure you're documenting and tallying that information otherwise you're throwing away money yeah. <clears throat> i mean that's the first step really get a system in place to track where your money is getting spent in accounting style. know where you're spending money with your financial accounting not only just on marketing but subcategorize it by vendor and lead source and type you know google local services versus google adwords you know have them divvied out and then track them in your CRM based on those things too. Would you say uh, it would be <clears throat> smart to increase the budget for the things that you feel that have the most revenue? Like, and tell me if I'm wrong. Like to me, it would be like, all right, I'm gonna push into that lead source. Obviously, 
try to pull out the fact that you spend money on us because I know that that's going to make you answer differently. <laughs> but if you if you're trying to get more leads, is it could you just hey I just want to spend double the amount on Google local services for instance. Like I'm just going to try to spend more money on that. Is that feasible or why why or why not? Is that a good answer? <clears throat> If I and let me make sure I'm answering the question right. Um, so you're wondering, <clears throat> how do I know where to put my money? Really, is yeah. what, what you're asking. Because I'm always about like just I want to increase on what's working. And I think we talked yeah. about it. One of the things really we talked about before this is like oh, Google Organic. Just because you double, just because you spent ten thousand dollars a month on it, doesn't necessarily mean that it's always going to go that much quicker. So there are certain limitations. Well, and there's you can't other nuances each, each avenue yeah. too, like organic yeah. just branding too, you know, that's establishing, that's a long-term play. I mean, we've always yeah. known that since we've worked together and it's been good return on investment for us, yeah. but that's, that's a longer term play. Um, so, if you're talking Google local services, <clears throat> that's a hard one too, because like, when that first came out, it was so, so, so much more lucrative because <laughs> we were one of the first in the state that were on there as Google guaranteed. And it's like slowly tapered down in regards to <clears throat> its efficacy. Um, but like right now, I mean, if you open your bidding, I'll like right now, like if you want, I like I have a bidding, like no, no budget limit on the bids, like as many as possible, bring them in it never will spend anywhere close to what I'm allowing it to be able to yeah. spend, you know? Uh, so it's not like you can just crank that up and get it. Okay. All the time. And, and that's, it depends, that's it depends what we were talking people, about. Right. Angie, Angie leads. I mean, hypothetically and from people, I don't have experience deep in that, but hypothetically, I mean, it's a little bit more of a turning up the dial opportunity there. I know that's a very yeah, controversial vendor. What's that? And then they can just spend more on their Google ads. Exactly. Which first and foremost, probably would be better for you to spend your money on your Google ads first and foremost. I, I obviously have an opinion on that. I think, but basically no, it is nice to have, I, we were talking about this before as well as like, it's nice to have a lead source that you feel like is kind of scalable. That yeah. feels like if you can turn up the money and the leads will like, when it, when it's cost per lead, it feels that way. There is a, a limited number of people clicking on even the Google ads and the home. I do think a lot of the traffic, I'm guessing more than half of the traffic of Angie is coming partly from them spending money on Google. So there is a middleman thing that's happening there a little bit. And the fact they sell the leads four times. But anyways, I don't need to get into that. Um, if you know how to, <clears throat> and I didn't know how to work the system, I've avoided these things like the plague for years because I didn't want to pay people to compete with me on it. But yeah. there, and we just had this conversation too. If you have the, the processes in place to yeah. work it the way it's meant to be worked, there's a reason it's still around and not, you know what I mean? I mean, there is. Yeah, so let's say, um, for Angie leads or a uh, thumbtack or a lead aggregator of some type. Uh, those, the, hey, there's uh, Modernize, there's, there's mm -hmm. Home Advisor still exists um, as its own .com, like, but I think all of it goes through Angie leads now, but. Yeah, it is, um, it is Angie leads now, same thing. Angie leads they, Home Advisor. Those things, like I think you'd said before we started on this, maybe 14% of the budget. Um, I don't know. We, <laughs> Hard to say, maybe, yeah. I mean, I, it depends on your strategy though, too, because in years past, that was like zero. From zero to 5 million for us, that was 0% of the marketing budget. But that was specific in, in my mind. And I, I just didn't psychologically like making them compete because we're working so hard on the SEO and it just felt like cheating your brand, you know, in my mind is kind of how I felt. It's like, I think if used properly, they could be done to help build your brand, but that was not our strategy. So you had uh, here Google local services and AdWords, maybe about 20% of the budget. Um, we we're talking about SEO, uh, 
about in 20 about in 20 percent actually yeah okay so you'd say 20 percent on organic um 20 percent on google ads and adwords um local services like you have 15 maybe it's 20 percent. if it, to me the, the other thing is is short-term to long-term tactics yeah you need to have a good balance of short-term tactics need leads now i have salespeople ready yeah. to go and long-term tactics this is a pretty good deal long term for these amount like if i build into something compounding or i have a lead in something like i'm, I'm pushing ahead in something i'm um like who knows you could rock home shows and do really well like there's different yeah. people do really well at different things yes you could be doing a, a common one is door knocking some people have that system down like yes clockwork they can they can put more people canvassing and make it happen so um pushing into what's working though and then balancing a good like i think hey maybe half of your stuff is like short term like we need leads now lsa's thumbtack angie leads you know you've got a balance of that and then you've got other stuff and i know you're spending some money as well on on video marketing so that but that's long play you know that's long play and then potentially it it has some positive effect on like closing rate or something like that, but kind of noting that you've got this balance of the long term and short term of yeah. marketing. And I think I think some people get stuck where they think of everything in marketing has to be that short term lead. No, 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 lead no, no. Only. There is a disadvantage to that because it's not a good um, foundation. Yeah. At all, I wouldn't say. And I think you're kind of hitting kind of a core concept to compound on the first point, like number one, track your data, but number two, have a plan, you know, like really look inside, like what is working in the marketplace, use the data, but what is your brand? How do you want to be positioned? What is your five-year goal, your 10-year goal, you know, all that stuff, reverse engineer it back down to your yearly goal, your quarterly. And like you said, diversify, identify like how much of that budget should be long-term, short-term, what is the lead cycle, the average like uh, time in the pipeline before you close the sale and keep all those things in mind as you're designing it. And then, then you'll be able to divvy it up. And at the end of the day, it's trial and error. <laughs> you know, it yeah. really is. I mean, and yeah. you've tried like, a bunch of stuff that never, that didn't turn into business, but you have, you have new information about what doesn't work. Yes. And, and it hurts a little bit you kind of like you do like to, you tap other roofing company owners who are who have done this a lot and you kind of ask for their feedback and it's weird how it is kind of weird how generous sometimes other roofing companies can be um with their information so it's i mean that you do get a little bit of help like from hearing asking for other people's failures what did you fail on that didn't work like you know yeah there's and, options learn from that too. And then like one thing to keep in mind is no matter what, like, yeah, track your, like, I think a couple points. Number one, track your numbers. Number two, like look at the numbers and use them, let them talk to you. But you really got to have processes. Like if you don't have processes that are differentiated for each of these efforts, you're not going to process them different because it's a different customer that's going to each of these lead sources, whether it's organic um, or this or that and how you position yourself, you know, like I would be willing to bet. I don't have the data and actually I kind of want to pull the data now, but it'd be very interesting to know my average project size based on referral and average project yeah. size based on um, different lead sources. But I mean, just to give you a comparison, like we're talking about referral yeah. versus Google search, the yeah. value in a lead yeah. is almost twofold. Yeah. So like the value per lead is two times as much on referral for us as yeah. it is for Google search. So maybe we should be investing a lot more into our referral system as <laughs> yeah, I, I'll be honest, man. I probably spend twice as much as I do on our referral systems as I do on our Google organic search. Yeah. That being said, I probably spend 
it's a big part of my job. So, um, and yeah, but I, I totally believe that as far as I, there is a little bit of like, uh, it kind of feels a little less scalable too. Yeah. Unfortunately, it, feels, it almost feels less scalable than organic in certain ways. Like it does feel like you kind of tap, like you get to the top of a, uh, a tappable spring um with with yeah. a referral well and like here's another interesting thing too. referral which is a software there's um what is it restoration referral system with matthew danskin who teaches people how to uh to get referral those are two things you could spend on regarding referrals i think they're both solid options anything else um any any light systems you can put in place in the company like with your employees regarding referrals like i know that you've got like in, some incentives and things like that so we did we did a, a kind of a yeah. push and that's one number i'm running right now for you to give you more concept context is i did an end of summer kind of leads promotion with my staff that i had bonuses like if they're self-generated whether it's referral based um solicitation whatever if it's a self-generated i didn't end of summer leads promo and that one increased so from so like that increased so you know uh, referral was twofold from google that increased from referral another 50 percent in value per lead for that just by like having an incentive in place working with your team like to generate that revenue it was a it had a better like value per lead because number one is higher close rate less time yeah. wasted, less ad spend, like all that jazz. Another yeah. good number, which would be interesting is previous customers. Like right now, previous customers, I mean, that's in line with my referrals too, for cost of lead or value of lead, right? Yeah. And that's your cheap. Like, kind of like... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, those are your cheapest and lowest hanging fruits, your referral to your previous customers. Oh, yeah. And there's a value to things that close easy. <laughs> you know, not sitting there with tire kickers, wasting a bunch of your salespeople's time. And I kind of want to use that to segue here, talking about the 2022 ideal roofing marketing plan and trying to get scalable percentages. And I realize it's not super easy. Um, I am going to give some suggestions. A clear clear numbers in the, the YouTube video about percentages based on this conversation and other conversations I'm having with roofers. Um, we're talking to a bunch of people about this and asking people what their ideal percentages would be, et cetera. But I think what it comes down to a lot, it's like, it's kind of how much loose salesperson time do you have? And like, obviously it's good to have activities that those people can have, but then there's other people where 30 leads a, a month is too much. Weirdly, like I've, I've got roofers where they can't, you know, they don't have enough people, you know what I mean? So do you have people sitting around or is it, are you three weeks out for every lead? You know, like there's, there's a really, that's the real the equation balance. here. Like what's that? There's a constant balance. Yeah. It's trying to figure that out because I think if you're three weeks out for every lead, maybe scale down the direct payment methods like Angie leads or pay, Google paid ads and stuff like that. And then keep anything that's organic, long term, or video, etc. Yeah, go ahead. Or you vet your leads a little bit more yeah. and qualify them more. Yes, there you Don't go. Hone in on the ones that are higher dollar value projects. You know, maybe yep. if you get a ton of leads and you're getting a shit ton of gutter leads, and you can't handle it, maybe cut off the gutter leads. I mean, it's an ebb and flow for us, honestly. Like sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, this is too many. Let's cut off no gutters, no repairs allowed. Like, no. And then other times it's like, all right, let's open the floodgates again. This is opportunity. We still get close rates off of that. It's still revenue and driving it. So open up the floodgates again. I think that's also like you, we said, like turning up the dial or not, like maybe not, it's maybe it's not even just turning up the dial. Maybe it's just opening yourself on your offerings on depending on the time of the year too yeah that's good and then the other let's swing kind of to the other side of it is like if you've got people sitting around like there's a cost to that too mm -hmm. you know there's a cost 
to multiple salespeople not doing so, and or doing low value activities. I'm not saying like it can't, door knocking can be low value. I'm not saying it always is. It's, I'm just saying if you've got closers, obviously you don't want them doing just prospecting a lot of times. And I, I know that there's different thoughts on that. So I don't want to say that too, too strongly. Um, well, you know, it's, it's an interesting concept too, though, that I had in conversation today with someone um, that they were talking about uh identifying not only like breaking it down like we're talking like legitimate you got a sales team he was talking to me about breaking down closing rates by salesperson by lead source and then mm -hmm. incorporating that into how you allocate those leads based on their strengths that's good because some of sometimes that uh that person that's really good at responding to organic stuff isn't as good at Yes, or retail or oh, yeah. insurance yeah. or gutters versus roof or or Angie's list. Yeah, it's any just finding those numbers. And that's where like knowing your numbers, like we talked about that first point, like documenting it and knowing your numbers. And this is literally what this person told me, like you got to have the information data to make the decisions. If you don't, you, you, you're blind. That's good. So. I'm gonna throw some numbers out there. I did. We talked about 15%, 20% for our Google Organic. We talked about 20% for Google Local Services and Ads. We talked about maybe 15 to 20% for um, lead lead aggregators like Angie and Thumbtack. These are loose numbers. Obviously, look at what's working for you. What are you able to close? Look at your closing percentages. Look at your your individual salespeople. Um, mix it up. You also could, you know, you can hire a marketing manager, which can be a little bit more expensive, obviously the management of that person. Do you feel capable of managing that person? If you do hire somebody, can you get somebody that can come up with their own activities? They could do graphic design, they could do video. Um, They're capable of keeping themselves busy, social media, et cetera, um, on a regular basis. That obviously can be a bigger chunk of the budget. And what would you say, Josh? I know this is something that you're thinking about in the next couple of years, if not, um, the beginning of this next year what would you say um is the the revenue spot where an average roofing company should hire a marketing manager just this is kind of an off uh that's a of, that's an interesting question because i don't fully know the answer and i'm trying to figure out that out myself um i know what you said is you feel like around five million and i would I mean, it's really hard to assign a number because every business is very different. I mean, if you're doing, I mean, there's some businesses that do 20 million their first year on door knocking. They don't have a marketing manager. They don't need it. They're just numbers. Yeah. So like you can't assign a revenue like cross board, like you're 5 million, you know, marketing manager. Um, but then there's companies also that do three to 4 million, but they're full retail, high margin, you know, 10 step close. And it's very strategic where they get their leads and maybe they need a marketing manager to get those leads with their high margins and big marketing budget allocated towards that. I personally feel like we're, we're us, we're, you know, we're kind of ebb and flow retail and right on the edge of that, yeah. We're, we're here and in between, like to be kind of diversified. Um, yeah we're at about the $5 million revenue mark and we're going to be ramping things up uh, shortly. Um, I think it's about time for us to get one, you know, pretty soon. So I'd say around the five, I mean, maybe the five to eight would be, I guess, but I haven't been through that. Really good. So I can't even speak to whether or not that's the right answer. And I don't want anyone to take what I'm saying as advice to do because I haven't been through it yet. Yeah. Yeah, well, like, you know, I don't like, you know, like, like, I know feel inclined. Yeah, I think it's a good, I think that's a really good range as a possibility. Um, obviously, figure it out for yourself. I know, you know well, it's like you said, only marketing, right? Yes, I only do think it's very right good. Now, I've freed up my time now. I have a sales manager managing the sales team, I have an operations mm -hmm. manager, I have people running the production department, I got administrative staff that are handling. All the other things, estimators, supplementers, whatever. Right now, what I'm missing is marketer, but I need to own my marketing and understand what those goals are and dig into it even deeper before I, and set those expectations before I delegate it out. Yeah, I think that that's really good. It's, I think coming, 
figuring out what the main activities that this person would do is a really big piece to making a good hire because marketer is I even talk to college students that come out of college and they're like, I got a marketing degree. It means jack shit. No one gives a shit. Because what's that? Yeah, no one gives a shit. Yeah, no one cares. So like, hey, but hey, if they were a copywriter or a, a video editor, or like, so there's like kind of different, you kind of want somebody with a little bit more specific of, of a skill set, if possible. So that- Anyone least, can pass with a B, I mean, <clears throat> I shouldn't say anyone, but I went to college for business and I went yeah. to school with a lot of people that graduated that I would not hire for that role. <laughs> and I, and you know, you and I talked about this before and maybe this is overstepping on the suggestion side too, but I do think looking for somebody a couple of years out of college is not a bad bet too, because I think they need I get this. Yeah. I get the feeling sometimes when you go earlier than that, that like a job is not always Hey, a job is hard. Jobs are, it's work. It's real work. And I'm not trying to do the whole like, ah, dang you, Gen X or Gen Y or you, whatever. What Gen are we? Gen Z. Gen Z, yeah. yeah. What well, dang you? I'm not doing that, but I'm just saying like ultimately there's an element of let them go out and get a couple, get a couple roughed up and then and then bring them in. <laughs> so you don't want somebody that comes out of college is like, so work is hard. Yeah, work is hard. You know, like it's okay that, and somebody's got to hire those people out of college. But I ultimately it doesn't have talk. to be hard if you're smart and lazy. Yeah, <laughs> right. Steve Jobs to hire the the laziest person because he knew they would find the most efficient way to do the job. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Um, on that note, let's wrap this up. Hey, it's been enjoyable talking with talking with you about this. I know that we didn't give anything that was like super hard and concrete. We gave yeah. some ideas for percentages. We gave some um, nuances and I hope it's useful for you as you're allocating your budget in 2022. Um, <clears throat> hey, do what, you know what, you know more about your situation than anyone else. Yeah. So do what's right for you. At the end of the day, it comes down to harvest the numbers, get the numbers. If you don't have them, dig for them. And if you don't, can't dig for them, start documenting this point for like, get the numbers, document your leads, where they're coming from, at, find out and document where your revenue is coming from and set a budget. Like just start budgeting now. It's gonna be off. It's not gonna be right. You're gonna mess up. I was told this advice by <clears throat> so much smarter than me. So I'm just regurgitating what I've been told. You know, make a budget, document your numbers. That is the tool to freedom because you can take that those numbers and look into them and use them to do amazing things. Sweet. Um, check that out, nofaceconstruction.com. And the, the podcast is put on by hookagency.com, Hook Agency, all over social media. Thank you so much for joining, watching, and listening. All right, bye-bye. Thank you, Tim.